Hello YouTube, Captain Mac here, and what you are looking at, in case you can't read, is an Embraer 175. Now, I racked my brain for like, no kidding, two hours trying to decide the best way to go about this. This video is in response to a request from one of you for um, a basic tutorial on the E-175, and basically uh, my understanding is that you, you really know most of the aircraft pretty well, but you're struggling, uh, or, or I don't know if struggling is a word. Yeah, struggling. You're struggling to get the aircraft to fly via the FMC or the FMS. Now, um, I looked at a bunch of different ways of doing this. It doesn't really fit into the life of a virtual airline pilot series, even though I was going to do a flight in that, but that didn't work out right because I've already done the next flight in the series, and then uh, there wasn't another plane going from that location. It was just a disaster. Um, so I decided we'll just do it as a tutorial. Now this is a basic tutorial. The aircraft is already in a uh, powered up state ready to have the engine started. We won't be flying with A-cars today or anything like that. It's going, going to be uh, pretty straightforward. Now we're going to fly from uh, Yakutat, Alaska over to Juneau, Alaska. And I chose that for a couple of reasons. One is a pretty short flight. We just did the uh, the LDA X08 approach into Juneau, Alaska, in our new series of on unusual, difficult, and dangerous approaches. Now that what the heck? Let's fly that approach again. It's a lot of fun. I really like that one. We're doing it in a different aircraft now. It's going to have a different feel to it, and I'm just looking forward to that. So that's what I chose for our flight today. It's not going to take very long. Um, the flight itself but this whole video is going to probably take about an hour like most of my videos because we're going to kind of go through a lot of this step by step um, it's going to have most of the uh, feel of your typical uh, life of a virtual airline pilot series uh, with a few things taken out i'm going to pull out uh, the checklist i'm, I'm not going to be uh, well I, I might put them up there i don't know i haven't decided yet you know that's part of the editing process anyway but we're going to go through this. Uh, th like I said, this is this is a tutorial. That's what this is all about. It's about learning this aircraft. Now, the E-175, in case I forgot to mention, it's from Field there. All right, it's the Field there E-Jet series. So you've got the 135, the 145, which are the regional jets, and then you've got the E-175 and the E-195, which uh, you know. I mean, it's a regional jet, too. It's just a little bit bigger. Now, the 175 and the 195 are identical on the inside. There's there's no difference. The only difference in them is performance, uh, carrying capacity, and so on. Specifically, we're going to be doing the 175 today, but just know that other than the performance differences, you know, and how much fuel it takes and the range and all that stuff, other than some performance differences, the flight deck is identical. How everything works is identical so you can take what you learn from this one and you can fly the E-195 from field there with no problem now that being said the 135 and the 145 not the same they're not the same so if you're interested and you'd like to see something similar to this uh, you know sort of a flight tutorial on the 135 and 145 please throw it down in the comments I'll be more than happy to throw that together so all of that being said what do you say we hop down on the air, uh, uh, not on, in, let's hop down into the aircraft, maybe, if it'll do what it's supposed to, there we go, and let's get this show on the road, shall we? Now my first thought when I hop on this flight deck is the whole thing kind of looks a little cartoonish, you know, it's, I don't know, it's, it looks cartoonish, I don't know how else to put it, but uh, as you can see from this photo right here, not so much. They actually did a pretty good job. It looks uh, just about like it does in the real E-175, so not so cartoonish, I guess. Um, there's a couple little things. Uh, when, I first, when I first got this aircraft, like I do with every aircraft when I first get it, even when I got my PMDG 737, I just jump in and I start messing with things until I figure out how to make it work. I don't read the manual. I don't like to do that. It's boring. Who likes to read a manual? That's why you guys are watching these videos. It's a lot easier to watch this video than it is to read the manual. And trust me, I read the manual on this thing, and it took a while, and it made my head hurt. But it does pay off. For example, when I first started messing with this, I realized, I'm going to pop this up here for you so you can see it. Uh, if I want to change the, the range on my nav display here, I move my mouse over. You see how the, you get the little brackets around that? And then I scroll my mouse wheel and it, and it changes the range. And I thought, well, that's really chintzy. That's, that's stupid, right? Uh, not so much. Let me explain why. See this guy right here? 
This is like a mouse pad like you would have on a laptop computer. And you use this to make changes on the actual, uh, uh, not the PFD, but the nav display. So that's actually realistic. So it's pretty cool actually when you think about it that they integrated it so that I use my computer mouse to do the same things that you would do with this mouse instead of having to mess around with this thing. I like that. Good stuff. All right. Um, it's a different airplane. You're going to find there's a lot of little quirks about this, but I have to say that Field Air did a really good job on this thing. Now, it is study level. You, you really do need to read the manual, or you know, hopefully you get enough from this tutorial that you can fly it efficiently. But you still need the manual for your V speeds and your approach speeds and stuff. But beyond that, hopefully this tutorial will be good enough that, that you don't need to uh, dig into the manual for anything else. That's up to you. The point being, however, uh, it's pretty in-depth not in depth like PMDG is okay PMDG is like the cream of the crop we all know that right but it is very in depth um, so we're gonna go through as much as we can here without uh, without making your head explode and I'm gonna try and keep this video to about an hour so we better get started on this so the first thing we need to do is we need to hop down here and I'm using easy doc uh, easy doc camera to move my camera views around I've got them preset for the aircraft so that I can just push a button and it goes where I want and you notice down here that it says no present position. So the first thing we need to do is actually set our position. Okay, this isn't unusual for any FMS. The way to do it in this aircraft is to click on the nav button here. And then you're going to see you got two pages. We're on page one and two. So click next and then position initialization. Click on that. And then if you notice, all three of these are very close to the same. We are at PAYA. Now here's a little quirk about this thing that'll it drives me bonkers. I can pop this up and it looks to me like that's pointing at this one here, but it's a little low. But when I have it down here, it's way low. And that's a little frustrating to me because it's this button for this particular uh, load position. So you might be inclined to push this one because it's actually below this little line and you're going to end up loading this one right here. No good, right? Well, it's not a problem in this case, but you get where I'm coming from. You're going to see how that can become a little frustrating later on. So that's how we load the present position by just clicking on the load button right there. Clear out the, the uh, annoying little message down there and then click on flight plan. Now, this is where we're at. Here's the key, and I haven't done this yet because I want to show you. If I want to load the FS flight plan, I did my flight plan in PFPX like I always do, and I saved the FSX plan file uh, with uh, you know an appropriate name, and there you go. If I click on load FS flight plan, it says cannot import plan. Well, that's frustrating. Here's why, and this is what you learn from the manual. In order to load the FS flight plan from here, you must have it loaded into the active flight plan for FSX. So you go to your flight planner, click on load. That's our flight plan right there. Open. I don't need to do anything else with it. I don't want it to move my airplane or anything. So just click OK. I don't want it to move it, so I click no. Now, when I click load FS flight plan, Bam, there it is. There's the flight plan right there, including our departure, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. So I can click on activate, and we're ready to move on to performance initialization. Now, this is where things get all kinds of busy. All right, first things first. Uh, let's see. This page is basically informational. You can change this information if you want. What the information in blue, I'm not messing with it. Click on next. Now, our fuel reserve. Now, let me pop up my flight plan over here. I know, I know the sound goes dead when I do that. It's really obnoxious, but unfortunately, I can't seem to get it to stop doing that. So, it is what it is. Okay, I've got my flight plan pulled up over here on the left. I want to pull up one more thing. This is the configuration tool. Okay? Now, any changes you make in this must be made before you start your flight simulator. Otherwise, you have to restart it for them to take effect, okay? The reason I keep this up is because I'm going to need this zero fuel weight. So you put the number of packs you're going to have in there, uh, your cargo and all that. I've got it set for uh, pounds, obviously, and then I got my zero fuel weight. So I just leave this up off to the side over here so that I can take advantage of that when I'm ready to put in zero fuel weight. Hey, look, the sound's back. Excellent. So the first thing I want to do is put in my fuel reserve, and on my flight plan I'm looking at it right now, it says the fuel reserve is... 1,282 pounds, so 1,282, and then again, the line select keys are off, so it's the second one down, there you go, but it looks like it could be the third one, right? It's like right in between, it's really frustrating. Okay, next page. 
Now, we're going to need that zero fuel weight. If you were paying attention, it was 61,842 pounds. 61,842. We're going to put that in the zero fuel weight. This is the only one that lines up right, so I usually count. It's not the blank one, so it's going to be that one. There we go. And now we want to confirm our initialization. But before I do that, to change the fuel in this, now they say there's a little trick where you can confirm it, and then you can come back and put a different fuel number in there, and then it'll change the fuel. But that doesn't seem to work for me. So, what we're going to do, uh, well, it told me it wanted to confirm and now it went away. That's interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our aircraft fuel real quick. Go into the fuel and payload. I usually do this before I come on here, but I'm kind of trying to show you everything. Change the fuel now. The total fuel for my flight, my release fuel is 5503. We're going to be here a little bit longer running the APU, so I'm going to put in 6,000 or thereabouts. So I'm going to put 3,000 each side. It gives me 3,004 aside, 6,004. So we're going to be just a tiny bit heavier than anticipated, but it's not going to be a problem. All right. Now I've got the fuel I want in there, and I can go to performance data. All right. There's three pages here. This is all informational. Next page, again, informational. And one more time, information. All right. Let's talk about our departure there. I think I'm going in the right order here. Let me think for just a second. Uh, let's go to performance, performance initialization. Good there, good there, performance data, we're good there. So we can go to departure. So we click on our departure. We're gonna be taking runway 11 today. Once again, uh, which one is it, right? Uh, it should be this one, runway 11. Fakes three is the only departure. So that's what we're gonna take. We'll be briefing that on the way out and then click on insert. I don't know why it always shows me check destination fuel. Maybe because it's gonna be a little bit higher than it needs to be. Uh, let's see, I think it's under progress. Uh, nope. Fuel. Yeah, see, it's showing fuel at negative 1.1, which doesn't really make sense to me because I have the proper profile for this aircraft in uh, PFPX. But let's play on the safe side and let's go ahead and change that fuel. So if it's going to be 1.1 is negative 1,000 pounds. So let's go ahead and... We want to make sure that we have that reserve fuel, which is supposed to be 1,282 pounds. So we need to add at least 2,000 pounds. So let's just add 3,000 pounds, and then I think we'll be good. And I'm just kind of winging it here. I'm not calculating this out. I'm just going with what seems the easiest. So if I want to add 3,000 pounds to this, I need to add 1,500 aside. So I'm going to put 4,500 aside. And that puts us at 9,000 pounds. That's a lot of fuel. But that's what we're going to go with. All right. And let's go back to... Uh, 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 uh. Trying to talk here. Uh, back to performance initialization. I know this, this is a bit of a pain, but, uh, you know, you, you got you to gotta set things up. So we got 9,000 in fuel now. It still says check destination fuel. Not sure why. Go to progress. Now we're going to have 1.9, so we're good to go there. So clear that out. We're good on that. Back over to performance initialization, back to perf data, performance data, departure. We've already put that in there. Now let's talk about our takeoff. All right. Sorry, had to take a drink there. Now, for our takeoff, we're going to need our V speeds, all right, which are going to go right here on page three. We need V1, V rotate, V2, and VFS. That's going to come from this guy right here, all right. Just a quick glance there. You don't need to stare at things. Not a big deal. But what we need for that, in order, uh, in order to use that chart, we need a couple of things. First of all, we need our uh, pressure altitude and our temperature. And basically, our pressure altitude is right around sea level. All right, it's below a thousand feet. That's the way the chart's set up. And our temperature is, I believe, it was negative one. Where's it at? Negative two. Okay, that's our temperature. This is the one we're looking at here. The SAT. And I think that stands for static air temperature. So we've got negative two. So the way the chart's set up, you know what? I'm going to drag it back over here and show it to you real quick. The way the chart is set up is you've got your pressure altitude. We're below 1,000, so we're going with sea level pressure, and we're at negative two Celsius. This is the temperatures in Celsius. So we're in this bracket here. So we're using one. We're using these speeds down here, but we need our weight. All right. We'll get our V1, V rotate, and V2 based on our weight, and we'll always round up. 
all right we always round up that's what the manual says to do and then our VFS will be over here that's where I'm gonna be pulling those from so where do we get our weight from we gotta hop back down here go back to our performance initialization page I think it was this one right yeah there we go our gross weight is 70,840 pounds all right so I'm looking over here and on the chart you've got 70,500 and the next one up is 71,700 and it's a difference of one knot for each of the V speeds so guess what I'm gonna go with 71,700 so we go back in here to departure takeoff page 3 that's kinda that's how you gotta navigate this thing it's a bit of a pain so V1 is gonna be 126 put that in there V2 uh, I'm sorry V rotate is 136 and V2 is 140 right yep 140 and I was actually off by one on the V rotate it was 135 but I'm gonna leave it at 136 that's fine and then all the way over here 189 is our VFS speed okay and if we don't put the VFS speed in there guess what it's not going to complete the initialization. So we definitely want to make sure we get that in there. All right. Let's click on our climb page. We can change this information if we want. I'm not going to mess with it. We do want to change our cruise altitude. Uh, I think we're going to go. It says optimal is 36.8, but we're actually going to go with 31,000. That's going to be our cruise altitude. So we want to put that in there because that's going to set up our um, uh, altitude restrictions on our flight plan for us. Next page. We don't need to mess with anything here. You can't anyway. Descent, 250 knots. Uh, we could change that uh, to 240 is what I usually do, but I'm going to leave it as it is. That's fine. Landing, we can put this information in. Uh, wind, uh, wind speed and direction, the elevation that we're landing at. We'll put that in as we get a little closer. And then arrival, and now we're talking about our uh, runway and approach. So we're arriving at PAGN, which is Juneau Airport. So we want to select our runway 08 and what is it the uh oh man my brain just went completely blank hold on let me grab it here real quick yeah it's going to be the lda x08 approach now there's two of them on here there's the z and the x approach i don't know if there's a difference between the two the chart i have doesn't distinguish so i'm just going to go with the x approach and um eef i i think uh nope we're going to start out here at Bergs, actually. Uh, and you'll see when uh, we brief the approach, you'll see why I chose Bergs as our starting point. So there we go. That's all in there. We can click Insert, Activate, and now we're good to go. So you can see for our flight plan, Runway 11 from PAYA. This is basically vectors here and here. And uh, we'll, when we brief the departure, you'll see what that's all about. But basically, it's going to be a left turn out to 083 degrees until we intercept uh, a radial to fakes and then from fakes to bergs which isn't very far as you can see bergs to sort and then SSR and all of that's going to be part of our approach briefing and then it shows it again in here which can be a little bit frustrating so just hit delete that one's gone notice it looked like I was deleting bergs but it actually deleted SSR there goes bergs uh, yeah, and then we're good to go. So we can just delete the... We can do this one of two ways. We can hit delete again and try to delete this out. Or what I prefer to do because it can be... You can see where the difficulty is with those line select key positions. I know this one's canceled, so this is Lynn. So I'll select PBD01. Make sure that that's what pops up down here in the scratch pad. Go one above it. Select right there, and now it connects them, and we're good to go. All righty. That is our flight plan, including our approach into Juno today. Easy enough. Uh, and that completes, let's activate that. That completes our initialization of the FMS. Now, the little runway position here, once we're on the runway, if we click that again, it will recalculate our position uh, to make sure, essentially, so that the computer knows we're on the right runway. And it just makes it more accurate. Pretty simple, right? Okay. Uh, did, I, don't, I don't think I showed this to you yet. I don't know why. Let's hop up here. Let's take a look at, hit shift, and then the number five, uh, not on your keypad, but up, up above your letters there, and you've got a checklist here. Now, let me tell you why I like this checklist. I'm going to move it over to the side here in a second. That's why I undocked it. The way this checklist works 
when you click on one of these, it's going to highlight red, and then there's a first officer who's going to start reading off checklist items to you, which is fantastic because you're doing the work of two people in this aircraft, so it's really nice to have a first officer at least carrying some of the load. And the, the way it functions is, if there's something you have to do, the first officer will read it off on the checklist, and then he won't do anything else. He won't say anything else until you actually perform that function. So let's say, uh, you know, let's say the checklist item is landing lights. Well, if you don't flip them on, then he'll just sit there. He won't do anything. As soon as you flip them on, then he says on and moves to the next checklist item. Fantastic. I love it. All right. So I'm going to start the cockpit safety inspection because there's nothing you actually have to do in this one. And I'm going to do that just to get the checklist going here. All right. And you cockpit can hear him in the background inspection. doing his thing. Maintenance status. Checked. <laughs> Cockpit emergency equipment. Checked. Okay, and so he's going to keep doing that. Obviously, you don't have to Electric listen to everything panel. he says. He'll keep talking in the background while Checked. we continue to get things set up. So, next thing we want to do, we want to go ahead Fuel. and we want to okay. set up uh, uh, our our flight Checked. controls. Okay, now, I'm not going to do Windshield wiper. the barometric pressure setting yet. And Checked. I'll tell you why. Because when we get to our power up or when, on one of panel. our checklists... That's what you have to do in order Check. to get him to move to the next checklist item. Air conditioning. And it, if you've Maddox already got panel. it set, you have to move it off of the proper setting and then back Checked. to the proper setting before he'll move on to the next checklist item. Passenger so oxygen we'll leave panel. that for the moment, and we'll go ahead and set up a couple other things. So we said we're Checked. going to flight level uh, 310. With these knobs e here, I can use my scroll wheel. And if you look right here, this is Checked. the altitude I'm, I'm dealing with right now. Okay. So if Landing I move my scroll lever. wheel, you can see it moves in 100 uh, Checked. In uh, 100, uh, oh, Start, come on, stop 100 foot increments. Thank you. Uh, if I stop. right click on this side, it'll go up in 1,000 foot increments. Speed, brake, And if lever. I right click on this side, it will go down in 1,000 foot increments. Close. If I left click on this side, it goes up in 100 foot increments. Ram, air, and turbine, And left click on this side, it goes down deploy. in 100 foot increments. So when I want to get up to 31,000, I can just Stowed. right click and hold on this side Flat until I get closer to 31,000 and there we go. It's a lot less scrolling. Kind of nice. Okay, I think I already mentioned the dark cockpit. Circuit okay, breakers. and the same is the same goes for Check. the mode control panel up here. All right. When you click cockpit on a function, it doesn't light up. It is an option uh, that Embraer puts out there, but apparently most airlines don't take that option. You actually have to look here to see what modes you have set. So let's start on this side over here. And you know what? I'm gonna go to. Uh, it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be able to zoom this in. Which one is it? This is supposed to be a little. There it is. Bam! So you can see it a little bit better there because it's hard to see. Okay. Uh, you got some basic functions here. You can change uh, which bearing source you're using. You can put the weather on. You can change to FMS. We're gonna do that in a little bit. You know, some basic functions. There's your barometric pressure. There's your minimums, whether it's radio altimeter or barometric pressure. Flight director. Now, when I click this. It doesn't light up here. You just see this light up down here. Okay, that tells me that the flight director is on and working. Good. Nav functions, the different nav modes, it cycles through them. So that's heading mode, and then localizer mode is armed. The reason localizer mode is armed right now is because my navigation is set to nav1 radio. If I click on the FMS, bam, now it's set to FMS, and when I click nav, it's set to LNAV now. That's what we're going to want to use. Okay, so we're going to turn. Uh, we're going to leave that on roll for now uh, because we're actually going to use heading mode on the way out. There's heading mode. There's approach mode. You can change the bank angle, autopilot, yaw damper, um, auto throttle, and uh, for the auto throttle, I tried to uh, um, map a joystick button for the uh, toga mode. We'll see if that works. VNAV functions. Uh, altitude, that's your basic altitude function, flight level change. If you don't understand how flight level change works, it's very simple. You set a speed you want. Okay, let's say I want, uh, let's say I want to climb at 150 knots. So I scroll this up to 150 knots. Right there. And then when I hit flight level change, it will change the pitch of the aircraft to maintain 150 knots while we're climbing. Okay, altitude select is pretty simple. FPA select, uh, not 100% positive on what that is. I didn't see anything specific about it in the manual, but I might have missed it. Vertical speed is pretty self-explanatory. Flight director, again, 
pretty straightforward course knob and then you, basically you've got the same thing on this side as you've got on this side everybody understand all that pretty straightforward right uh let's see where's the I'm gonna shrink that back down now maybe maybe not there we go it's gone okay he's done with the cockpit safety inspection i'm gonna get him started on the power up list power up checklist battery one on I'll pop this up for you so he's going down battery all of this two. right now auto battery voltage checked alright what else do we need to cover while he's doing that I don't, I don't think there's anything GPU else we really need to cover button. on here um, actually yeah you know what there's a couple other things I do want to cover while he's going through that so the way we can change the Fire setup on here, for example, panel. there's a vertical profile um, checked uh, setting that you can put on here. And if you click on map, left Emergency mouse click, go to vertical lights. profile, then check box, check mark it. There you go. Arm. You have your vertical profile right there. Uh, plan mode APU is pretty straightforward. You know what plan mode knob. is? You can check all your systems over here. Click on status, and you can change on. which system you're checking. And you now can go lights. through them like that. And then if you don't want to change it, you can just hit the X, and it goes on. away. Back over in the map, you've got all your nav aids, Logo airports, lights. waypoint identifiers, progress. Um, you know, progress is a good one. I like to keep that one up there as, as well. It gives us information on where we're going, all that good stuff. Um, let's see, TCAS. You can change your TCAS. You can change these by using the mouse wheel. Normal, below, normal, above. Okay. You can put range and uh, what I don't I don't know what ABS is for whatever reason. My brain doesn't want to function on that right now, so I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, and you can put your what you can turn your weather on here as well, including turbulence. Now, as far as turning on the TCAS goes, since we're still, did he ask me to do something? He probably asked me to do something. I was busy running my mouth. Uh, let me see here. Okay, this is going to go silent for just a second because I I'm going to go over and double check the checklist on here. Uh, let's see where are we at. Power up, battery one. Here, I got it over here so I can look at it now and make sure we've got everything done. So battery one needs to be on. That's this one. Battery two is on auto. That's that one. Battery voltage has been checked. GPU button as required. It's available, but we don't need it. Fire extinguisher panel has been checked. Emergency lights need to be armed. Where is that one at? Uh, come on, brain work. There we go. Emergency lights, they are armed. APU selector knob, start, the APU's already on, so we're good there. Nav lights need to be on, that's what it is. Nope, nav lights are on. Off, on, it's logo lights, watch. On. <laughs> Hydraulic panel. So you see what I mean, he won't, he won't move on Check. until you complete it. <coughs> Excuse me, Electronic in your face again. CBs. He's not going to move on until you complete that checklist Checked. item. DV. DR so you panel. have to, you usually kind of have to listen to him. I'm trying to checked. I'm trying to talk to you guys and listen to him at the same time. Photoluminescent well. strips. I don't even know what those checked. are. Checked. And I don't think there's really Power anything else we need to talk about in here. Completed. This is pretty straightforward. Just keep in mind, none of this stuff is going to light up. It's not going to happen. Okay. Um, so you need to make sure you're paying attention to what mode you're in over here on top of the primary flight display. So when you hit the nav button, it cycles through, roll, L nav, and so on. Whatever's up top here is the current function. Whatever's on the bottom here, like this says altitude select, all right, that is the armed function, all right? So if we're in heading mode, which we will be when we first take off, we're gonna have heading mode up here, all right, and then we're gonna arm L nav down here. And in order for L nav to work, you must be on an intercept course to the lateral navigation line. All right, uh, let's see. Let's go to pre-flight. Pre-flight checklist. Pressurization panel. While he's going through that, I'm going to get us pushed back here. Set. It's too small. Give me Oxygen a masks. Okay, we'll just push back without Checked. it. Checked. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Flight instruments. Hello, everyone, and welcome It's a small aircraft. Why would your position be too small for a small aircraft? Okay, flight instruments um, is the one he just gave. This is where you have to right set the barometric pressure. Now I could scroll this through. Right now I've got 2972 as the uh, um, barometric pressure. So if I scroll this down, set. 
So that is the proper pressure. Now, if you scroll it to whatever you have, whatever your weather program is telling you, and he doesn't say set, then just hit the B Bravo button, and that'll set it to whatever FSX is actually putting out there, and then it'll say set, and you're good to go. So it's a little workaround there. You push back okay, just so a little further here because we still have to do the pre-flight or uh, the before-start checklist. Um, not too complex. And there are flight attendant announcements on here as well, but of course I use my own. Those will be kicking off in the background already because we'll why not, right? Um, this will cause the belt to tighten around your waist. Oh, he's waiting on me again. Don't be stop push back here. Set the and park and brake. My apologies if this seems like I'm kind of bouncing around on. a little bit. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to make sure yeah, I cover everything. Flight he just checklist completed the completed. checklist. So we can do the before start checklist now. And this is going to probably require some stuff. Start on. checklist. On and fastened throughout the whole entire Trim flight. Trim panel. Turbulence, but you don't have to. I wouldn't. Set. That would be stupid and very uncomfortable. MCDE. All right, so enough with seatbelts. Check. Um, next. That's uh, this. Emergency exits. Set. Go over the emergency exits. There are a few of them on the plane. Fuel quantity. And every one of them has. Check. So all I'm doing is clicking so on the checklist and letting it do its thing. Taxi takeoff briefing good, completed. Good. Not the not exits. the departure briefing yet. Nice. Passenger now, sign. Find the one closest to you. Perfect. On. That is your now the reason we haven't done a taxi so briefing is I don't have Doors a taxi and chart and for this air airport. Closed. Flight deck the door. Lane. He's so awfully slow at it though. That's go. it's a little frustrating. He's kind of slow, especially when I'm recording a video and I don't want it to be too long. When I'm ready to show you a bunch of stuff, so I'm worried about the video getting too long and he's just taking on. forever. <laughs> Hydraulic pump three A. So now you have to look for the arrow. Whichever way the arrow is pointing, the handle needs to go that way. So if the arrow is pointing down. He said hydraulic it's pump 3A. The handle goes up. Where are we That'll at here? I'm checking my checklist over here right, now. It's, it's, uh, it's, da, pretty, da, da, da. it's pretty complex, I see. I before understand. Start. I saw a few confused looks in the Hydraulic crowd. pump 3A it's needs to be on. That's what it's it really says. Not. So let's move this out of the way. Okay. And let's make now, sure a hydraulic pump 3A is on. To the under it is not. The see? So he's waiting for us. It inflates. And somehow we can use it as a There we go. Pretty cool. Overhead panel. Water, we'll probably all die, but say no. Normal. Normal means no it's lights. Light. All those knobs oh. in before the before start right. twelve o'clock position. Completed. So okay, so that's the before start checklist. Now so now we're gonna roll right mask. into the startup, which is so really quick and easy because this has a FedEx system in it. I forget what that stands for off the top of my head, but basically it's an auto start system. So we roll down here. These have a cover on them, so you have to right click to open the cover. And then you use your mouse wheel. It doesn't. The clicks don't work on it. I'm clicking right now. It does nothing. So I scroll the mouse wheel to start. That's how they work. It jumps back to run, and it automatically starts the engine. Right click to close the cover again, and you can see the engine's already starting up on its own. We'll let it do that for a second. While I continue to cough. It'll works out better that way. Man, I'm telling you, I've been. All right. This this cold just um, wouldn't go away. Now that dinging will yeah, not stop yeah, until you click this button, and it uh, is annoying. Call one of us. All right, let's let that engine finish stabilizing a little bit. No promises, but you can try. All right. It looks good to okay. me. Right click to In open the cover. Emergency. Scroll the mouse wheel to start. Right R2 click to close the cover. The and position. she will start up on her own. There she goes. Okay. Just like that. Um, so All right, so that's going to finish starting up. I'm going to pause forward. the video for a minute. I'm going to make sure i got everything ready to go sure here, and that way we can get um, rolling without going through a bunch of other nonsense. We'll do the after start checklist as um, we taxi out. Um, so I'll be right back. Elbows. You put them against your thighs. All right, and, and as we're taxiing sure out here, we'll go ahead and take care of the after start like checklist. That. I don't know. After why. start checklist. Do that. That's not really going to save you. Flaps. If we're going to die. You crash. You're just going to die. They're, they're, I haven't said flaps yet. You know, if it One. makes you feel better, Actually, four, flight control. Right. <laughs> um, so now checked. Sit life vests. Okay. So the life vests are located under your seat. Check. Or they're between the armrests. You know, figure Dispatch it out. clearance. Check it out. See which one it is. Check. Okay, so 
Um, After engine to so, start checklist completed. The now these checklists were pulled uh, from a real world airline. I don't know which one. Head. It doesn't say. It just says there that, that it's a real world operating I checklist. So those are the things yeah. that they're going through. Now I, I have Anyways, my throttles all the way cut all the way back. They are, uh, no. this, this um, thing, it moves honestly, very easily, so you don't need don't, throttle really don't, don't to get so going. To you can see our windsock, it'll well, come uh, in your line of sight there, just off to the right, right over here. That's our windsock pointed this way, which means the wind's coming from that direction. And this is runway 11 right here. So we are definitely taking the right runway. It is not a very long runway, and this aircraft actually requires a good bit of speed to get going. So guess what? We're going to go all the way up to the end of it here, and we're going to make sure that we use every last bit of that runway. And I'm going to do the before takeoff checklist as we're taxiing out here since we're about to pull right. in the runway. Now, before now takeoff checklist. Turn off your phones right, turn or any on other electronic Takeoff configuration. I'll put them onto airplane mode. Okay, takeoff no, configuration is a button or down we here. We just like to be jerks. Push no, it. But you have to do it. Takeoff, okay. Okay, this is a no smoke. Check. If for any uh, reason the takeoff is not okay, it will tell you why. Check. Right, so the bathrooms. Yeah, they totally got caught. He cast. I'll Check. demonstrate that here in a minute. Let me turn the TCAS on for you. Strobe so lights. TCAS, you go to radio, on, P-A-R-A, and you're good to go. Landing lights. We are supposed to encourage you on. to do that. So you should do it anyway. Transponder. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me or any other crew member. T-A-R-A. Well, let's have a Wait, good time. There you go. Before takeoff checklist completed. All right. Which means we're basically ready to rock and roll once we get lined up here. Now, once I get lined up, I'll put the parking brake on. And I'll show you what that uh, takeoff configuration thing does if you aren't in the proper configuration. So let's stop here. I just use control period to put the parking brake on, but you can also click it right here. Now, if I hit T, uh, the takeoff configuration button, listen to what it says. No takeoff brake. No takeoff brakes. If you didn't have your flap set properly, it would say no takeoff brakes flaps all right and I'm bringing my pitch up here in case you didn't notice we're gonna need about 5.5 nose up for the pitch and that's it we've got the four takeoff checklist done everything's ready to rock and roll uh, oh almost forgot I can't believe I almost forgot this I haven't briefed the departure yet because I was so busy dealing with everything else so let's go ahead and take care of the departure briefing all right there's only one departure out of Yakutat and that is the fakes departure and you can see that it's applicable for all runways so basically if you're flying out of Yakutat you're flying the fakes 3 departure uh, depending on which runway you take off on you're gonna make a turn and intercept a 098 degree radial that's this guy right here from the Yakutat VOR out to fakes and at fakes you must be at or above flight level 180 takeoff minimums for this airport standard takeoff minimums with a minimum of climb of 280 feet nautical mile up to flight level 180. We're not going to have any problems meeting that in our E-175 today. Uh, there are some obstacles out there. Trees beginning 94 feet from the departure end of the runway and on and on it goes. They may or may not be visible in the sim. After all, it is the simulator. I don't think we're going to have any issues with these trees. But in the real world, obviously, you'd want to pay close attention to uh, obstacles during takeoff. Now let's take a look at the route description for the departure route. We're taking runway 11, as already mentioned. It's a climbing left turn on heading 083, and then dot, 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 down to here. There's actually four dots there. Intercept the Yak BOR DME on the 098 degree radial out to fakes. Already mentioned that. Cross fakes at or above flight level 180 for assigned route of flight. So just like I said, we're taking runway 11, so it's a 083 uh, left turn here. And we're going to intercept the 098 degree radial out to fakes. It's going to be easy enough. We're going to be using the FMS to fly this thing anyway. We might fly it a little bit by hand. I don't know. We'll see. Depends on how I feel. <laughs> uh, what else? That's it. That's the whole departure right there. Quick, simple, down and dirty. So let's get the bird in the air. So for the record, it's probably not the best idea to sit in the middle of the runway and do the departure briefing. But uh, yeah. I forgot it, so there we go. We're in the middle of the runway. <laughs> but there's your departure briefing, so what do you say we go fly it now? Let's get this show on the road because, hey, the video's already going to be long. It's a Captain Mac video, right? All right. Parking brakes off. Maybe. There they are. Let's 
check our takeoff config again. Takeoff, okay. Okay, because there was a little red warning there that was saying it wasn't. All right, let's run the engines up a little bit. We got 2,350 meters of runway. We're going to need all of it. All right, let's see if Toga works here. It did not, so we'll click over here. There's a little hidden switch there. Maybe, maybe Speed not. Speed alive. All right, full throttle. Thrust do it checked. manually. <laughs> all right, let's listen for our call outs. They'll call out all of them. 80 knots. V1. Rotate. And we're off. Positive rate. Positive rate. Bring the gear up. About 15 degrees nose up. Gear up. Bring that nose back down just a little. Making our turn here shortly. Here's the auto throttle. Start our turn now. Start bringing flaps up. And as we're turning in here, I'm going to select LNAV, turn the autopilot on, and then I'm going to select, where is it at? Flight level change. We're set for 175. We come up another setting of flaps here. Go to flaps 2. And you can see it's already intercepted the LNAV course. So we're flying that outbound leg to, uh, what's the name of it there again? Fakes. Flying that outbound leg to Fakes. You can see the speed's coming back down to 175. That's where we want it to be. Everything's looking good. Let's go ahead and bring that speed up a little bit now. And when I do that, you'll see the nose will come down. I'm going to bring the speed up to 200 knots. See the nose start to come down. Okay, the aircraft is going to adjust its pitch to maintain that speed. And now we can go ahead and bring flaps all the way up. And with the flaps all the way up, let's do the after takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist. Flaps, zero, landing gear, up, pressurization, checked, after takeoff checklist completed. My god, he is slow at that. Alright, so that's it, that's all, no more until we get to top of descent, so... Hey, what do you say? We might as well have some of that obligatory elevator music in this one too, right? Alright, I adjusted our cruise altitude to flight level 270 because flight level 310 was just too high for this flight. We're not going all that far. But even though there's no uh, cruise checklist, obviously things always remain the same on cruise. You're monitoring your instruments, you're monitoring your fuel, you know, you're making sure everything's good to go, and, and you're always sort of preparing for descent and approach and all that, pulling up your charts, making sure everything's in order. Okay, that's what we're doing in cruise. Now, the reason I popped on here real quick, this video is already going to be a little over an hour, and I apologize for that, but it is what it is. The specific reason that 
uh, one of you requested this video is because you said you were having a hard time getting it to follow the FMS on the flight plan. So there's three things we want to make sure of to uh, get it to, to, or there's, I can't even talk. There's three things we want to verify to make sure that it follows the FMS flight plan. First of all, we want to click the FMS button here. When we click that button, and I'm just going to pop this up, FMS1 will show up down here. Okay. If we don't click on this button, it's not going to fly via the FMS. So that's the first thing we need to make sure of. Click this button and make sure it says FMS1 down here. Okay. The second thing we need to do, we need to make sure we're on an intercept course to this line. Okay. This is the line that this is uh, our flight plan line. So if we're over here somewhere and we try to get it into LNAV mode, it's not going to happen. You have to be on an intercept course. So we would have to make a left turn so that we're headed like this. And then once we're on an intercept course, it will arm the LNAV down here for us. And then once it gets to that line, it will follow the LNAV. That's the second thing we need to do. Okay. The third thing we need to do is we need to come down here and we need to take a look at our FMS and our flight plan and make sure that there are no um, uh, what's what's the word discontinuities all right if there's any breaks in our flight plan all right any breaks anywhere in here which there's not it's what's going to happen is it'll follow the flight plan up to that point but then it'll just get itself confused all right so make sure that you don't have any breaks in your flight plan all right and then the last thing we want to make sure of is when we hit the nav button okay here's the nav button right here we need to make sure that it either shows LNAV in magenta up here or that it shows LNAV in white down here okay so if this mode says let's say this says heading mode okay that's okay as long as this says LNAV down here and the way that would work is if you hit heading okay it would show heading up here HDG in green all right and then if you clicked on the nav button until L nav was in white down here and then you make sure that heading is on an intercept course to this line guess what it's gonna fly to that line and then as soon as it gets there L nav will pop up here in magenta and then you'll be on course so you want to make sure you have all those things in order to to, ver uh, to make sure it sounds like I'm saying make sure a lot aren't I <laughs> make sure you have all those things in order to make sure that you're aircraft is going to follow your FMS flight plan okay another thing too is take a look at your plan mode all right if you've got a waypoint here and the next waypoint is back behind the one you just passed your aircraft's going to fly to here and turn around and come back and then turn around and come back okay if you've got something like that going on you need to figure out what's going on in your flight plan uh, what you need to remove so that you're not flying in circles okay now again and I'm gonna wrap this up here but the whole purpose of this tutorial was by by request from one of you guys alright and uh... why is it so slow here hold on for some reason it i wasn't expecting that it switched into uh... mock mode instead of speed <laughs> and so you can see our nose is very high here i'm so busy trying to show you guys this stuff i completely just didn't pay attention and that of course is never a good thing because we're flying at twenty seven thousand feet and awfully slow and that's a bad idea all right, so you got to make sure we're paying attention. That's what we're doing at cruise, right? Okay, make sure you got everything in order in your flight plan. Make sure you've selected FMS as your navigation source. Make sure that you're on an intercept heading to the navigation line, and then make sure that you click the nav button so that either L nav shows here or it shows in white here. If you haven't selected the FMS as your navigation source, L nav will not appear. It won't happen. Period. All right. Last thing I want to cover, and then I'm gonna get off here because we're gonna be at top percent pretty soon. See this little profile view? It's fantastic. The green line shows us where we're pointing, where we're flying. We're flying straight and level right now. If we were climbing, it would be pointed up. For descent, it would be pointed down. shows us our top of descent point, and it basically gives us all of our different uh, elevation points along the way. It's really great. I like to have it up there. Once again, click on map, select the little box next to vertical profile, and you're good to go. All right, I'm done talking. <laughs> I'll see you guys here very shortly for our descent checklist. All right, as you can see here, we're about 10 miles uh, from top of descent now. I've gone ahead and changed my altitude uh, setting to 3,700 in anticipation. Now, what I want to do is I want to arm my VNAV mode here. All right, so I'm going to come over here. This is the VNAV key right here. 
I'm going to click on it. See, it says V altitude right now. I don't want that. Okay. I don't want altitude select. See, I think I'm too far out. Okay. So I'm going to leave it on altitude for now. And then I'm going to start this descent checklist. Now, with this descent checklist, descent checklist. not going to complete until we get below 18,000 Auto feet. brakes. Auto brakes are going to be low. Come on. Low. There we go. Low. Landing data. Landing data, I believe, is the barometric pressure setting. And it won't it won't do that until we get below 18,000 feet. All right? Once we get below 18,000 feet, it'll 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 allow us to do it. Even if I set it right now, it won't do anything until we get below 18,000 feet. That's how the checklist is set up. Apparently, a lot of airlines, that's what they do. Their descent checklist actually starts once they cross below 18,000 feet. Okay? So, I'm not going to make you stay on here until we get below 18,000 feet. Um, just know that you're going to have to change your barometric pressure setting. And then once you're below 18,000 feet, to make sure that it's proper, I usually hit the Bravo key, and then it usually does the checklist. Now, we should be close enough. Now, let's hit VNAV. Let's just do an altitude select. So I'm going to go right into vertical speed mode. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it starts descending. It's on altitude select. See, we're on flight plan altitude now, and altitude select is armed, and that's not working. So let's go into vertical speed. Let's scroll that uh, down, not up. Okay. Start out at 1,000 feet per minute. I'm going to keep trying this VNAV while I got you on here. VNAV path. There we go. Once we started descending, I click it. It says VNAV path, and that's what we want. And we want uh, v al uh, we want altitude select in here, okay? Because what's going to happen is it's going to intercept that 3,700. Now it's going to hit these waypoints though, because it's on VNAV path. It's not going to. It shouldn't just. It shouldn't descend below 19,100 feet before it gets to this waypoint here. That's that's the altitude we need to be at there, flight level 191. All right, so that's what VNAV path is for. So you want to make sure you click the VNAV button. It looks like, uh, it looks like maybe it's a quirk or maybe there's just something I'm not understanding, but I hit the vertical speed and as soon as it started descending, hit VNAV and it went right to VNAV path and we were good to go. So I'm gonna continue on the descent and I will see you guys when we were on approach to Juneau, Alaska again. Sweet. All right, let's take a look at this approach real quick. We've seen this one recently. I just did this uh, in our uh, Unusual, Difficult, and Dangerous Approaches series. This is the LDA X08 approach into Juneau, Alaska. And I thought for this particular tutorial, this would be a, a great one to do. Lots of fun. I enjoy the approach. It's really neat. Uh, I hope you guys did too. So I thought, what the heck, let's fly it again. And this time, let's fly it in an E-175 and see how that goes. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, just like last time, depending on where you're coming in from, uh, we're going to be coming in from over here near Bergs. So we're going to intercept at the Sisters Island VOR. That's going to be our initial approach fix. Hang a left to the 007 degree radial into the initial fix at Linz. We can be 5,000 at Linz and then drop down to 3,700 by the time we get to Barlow. And that's our final approach point. And then uh, on down through here, Remember, it's an offset approach because of this mountain right here. So basically, we're going to just scoot on down. It's a visual approach. Uh, we do get lateral navigation from the VOR here, but we're not going to get uh, vertical navigation. So visual approach, especially uh, as far as the vertical navigation goes. Scoot past the mountain here, quick little left, quick little right, and then put her down on the ground. As far as the missed approach procedures are concerned, if we do a missed, if we have to execute a missed approach, we're gonna make a right turn to heading 310 and intercept at the outbound magnetic heading. I think that was the right turn for QDR. Uh, 251 from CGL. That's this way here. 251. I don't know why they don't just call it uh, the outbound or the 251 degree radio. Why not just call it the radio instead of I don't know. Uh, I'm, maybe I'm missing something. If somebody knows why they call that a QDR or the outbound magnetic bearing rather than just the radial, 251 degree radial, let me know. Anyway, uh, once we get up here, uh, back up basically around Barlow, we're going to intercept the 027 degree uh, radial inbound to either SSR or EEF. And since SSR is already programmed into our system, 
That's the one we're going to use, climb to 5,600 feet, and then hold out here at SSR or EAF until ATC tells us otherwise. Of course, we're not going to be doing any holds, so if for some reason we have to do a missed approach, we're basically going to do this little number here, and when we get back out here to Sisters, turn around and try it all again. Uh, we've seen this runway already. We've got the Vassy lights instead of the Pappy lights, so you remember those are stacked one on top of each other. It's a slightly... Uh, slightly steeper approach angle here 3.5 degrees and that's that has to do with bypassing this terrain and then dropping down this terrain comes all the way over across this approach path it's just higher here than it is over here um, let's see what else we we know the runway is not real long but it's not too short it wasn't too bad this isn't a really hard approach it's more just of an unusual approach so a lot of fun on this one uh, here's our profile view here again from uh, lens we can be this thing always looks funky to me, but uh, when we get here to Lens, going this way, we can be at 5600, Descent and it shows that right here, uh, and that, again, is our initial Auto fix, brakes. and then down from there uh, to our minimum Low. decision altitude, which uh, Landing data. 25 feet should be 225 feet, right? What do we got here? This is uh, minimum visibility, not worried about that. Uh, again, if we, can't, if we can't see the runway by the time we get here then we're going to do our missed approach, just like last time, uh, because this the way this is set up, distance 2 to IJDL is confusing to me in the way that it's outlined it, uh, on the profile view. So the way I see it, if we hit uh, CGL VOR and we can't see the runway, we're going to execute the missed approach. Still don't know what this means. Nobody's put anything down in the comments. I've talked way too long about this approach considering we've already done it. Uh, so what do you say we go ahead and fly it again? All right, so I made a mistake on one thing here. The landing data is actually something you enter in the FMS down here. And so we're going to do that right now as we continue on our descent. You need to come down to the FMS, click on Performance, and then Landing, and go to page 3, and you have your V speeds, and you get these from the manual. Okay, so your V ref is your landing speed. We're landing with full flaps. I've already checked our weight. We're going we're gonna to be at 60. Oh, well, let's double check it. Let me show you how to check it anyway. To check your weight, Go back here to the performance initialization, page 3, and our gross weight, 68,480. So it would be, it's 68,300, and then the next one up is 70,500. So we're going to go with the 70,500. So click on the performance button, landing, go to page 3. So our V ref at 70,500. Now we're assuming icing conditions. So they're going to be a little bit higher. All right, flap full is 129. So we're going to go 129. Let me hit the B. Okay. One, two, niner. There's our V ref. Okay, V approach speed is V ref plus 5. So that's 134. Okay, and the VAC speed, that is basically the climb out speed for either flaps 2 or flaps 4 in the event of a missed approach. And it depends on your company SLP. We're going to go with a flaps 4 climb out speed, so that's 136. And we put that in there. Set. And now our landing data is set. Altimeters. Altimeters. Let's see set. It. They're set. He won't do that until you get below 18,000. Cross checked. All right. Uh, we're just about up here Descent to, uh, what completed. are we coming up on here? SSR, we're coming up on the VOR here, so I'm going to hop off of here until we're actually into the approach. I just wanted to make sure I showed that to you so that there's no confusion. So once again, the landing data is your V speeds for landing. You must set those in the FMS, and you must get those from the manual. See you in a few minutes. All right, we're getting close here, as you can see. And uh, we're going to have to switch to ver vertical speed mode here. Keep this descent going. Can't quite see the runway yet. Get some more flaps in there. That little warning is just uh, once you get the flaps to, the spoilers cut out, basically. And uh, we're flying manually at this point. So we've got a good view of the runway. We're a little high. A little high. That'll happen. Take the uh, throttle. auto throttle off here. Bring those throttles back some. Bring in some more flaps. Let's get that gear down. Let's take care of that approach checklist while we're doing all that. Approach checklist. 
Passenger signs. On. Landing lights. On. Altimeters. Well, apparently it's not right again. Set. Keeps changing. Cross checked. Approach checklist complete. All right. Looking a little better here now. I think we're close enough for the landing checklist. This is why I like this checklist feature too. I can click on it Before and it'll tell me if I need if checklist. I forgot something. Landing gear lever. Down. Flaps. Full. Before landing checklist complete. <laughs> well, that's a short checklist, isn't it? <laughs> All right. So the autopilot's off. Everything's looking good. We're just a little high. Not bad, though. A little high and a little bit to the right here, actually. We'll actually be uh, we'll be on glide slope here shortly. So in fact, we're gonna go bring in just a little more trim there. Otherwise, we're gonna end up too low. Looking good here now. This is where we want to be, just to the right of the mountain here. Not a whole lot. Not too close, but we're gonna hit it. Approaching minimums. Terrain. Terrain. Yeah, terrain. yeah, yeah. Minimums. Minimums. All right, looking good, looking good. Okay, a little to the left here. Swinging around to the right. This thing minimums, turns slowly. Minimums, 200. This thing turns very slowly. Keep it from descending too quick. Little stutter there, my apologies. Can only do so much. 100. All right, let's bring it in. 50, 40, 30, 20. Loaded that. Goodness, get down. Boy, it's floating big time. Ten. Come on. There she is. Auto break. We're not making that exit, that's for sure. <laughs> Boy, we used that runway up on this one. I don't know why it floated so bad on me. The throttles were back. We were below our landing speed. Everything was looking good, and it just uh, just kept floating down the runway. All right. Uh, let's see here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at our destination. Oh, there's the flight attendant kicking in. That's not my flight attendant. I don't know who's that. It must be a stowaway on board. That ain't my flight attendant for sure. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing off the runway here. And because this video is already longer than I wanted it to be, we're not going to take this all the way in. Uh, you don't. You don't need me to go through the shutdown procedure. It's pretty straightforward, but it, there is a checklist for it, too. You just click on the power down uh, checklist item, and it'll tell you exactly what to do. So that's going to wrap it up for this flight, folks. Um, let's jump outside. I like to jump outside here. I like the outside of the airplane here. Somebody made a comment on that uh, on one of my videos. said, why don't you show the outside more? Well, here you go. All right, folks. So, again, uh, a, a few little uh, maybe hiccups, we'll call them. This was a, probably a rough video. I banged my head against the wall trying to figure out the best way to go about this and it just seemed to me that this was probably the best way to do it just do it as sort of a tutorial flight so that's what we've done here I hope that the information that I've covered has been uh, adequate to answer any questions you might have about this aircraft it does have some little quirks somehow I managed to put the uh, speed hold mode into mock and I couldn't get it to switch back and the only way to get it to switch back was to uh, change it over so that the FMS controlled the speed so some little quirks and stuff like that uh, can be a little difficult to deal with with this aircraft, but overall it's actually really good. If uh, you have any questions that you feel weren't answered in this, you need something explained a little better, please leave it down in the comments. And uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. 
And uh, I think we're up to 410 now. It's the day after Christmas. I miss Christmas already. It's the day after Christmas. We're up to 410, and I'm still shooting for 500 by the end of the year. That's what I'm hoping for. So I need 90 subscribers basically by the end of this week. This coming week. Because today is what? Saturday, right? Yep. I need 90 subscribers by the end of this week, folks. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Come on over. I appreciate every one of my subscribers. And those of you who've subscribed to this point and stuck with me so far, I thank you kindly. And please, if you have any more suggestions for videos, something you'd like to see, some type of tutorial you'd like to see, whatever it may be, please don't hesitate to put it down in the comments. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Nope. It's like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Yeah, there it is. All right, folks. Been a great flight. As always, keep the blue side up unless otherwise instructed by ATC or when performing aerobatics. Y'all have a great day.